A mutu ka huri ki roto i ngā kaupapa ko tahirau e rima te kau o ngā riri whenua. Mai o rua peka peka ki te toke rau, ki te tarata, ki waere ngā hika, ki wharani, ki wharani, ki wharani, ko tahi te kōrero me tautoko tātou i tēnei pētihana. We got a lot of correspondence from Pākehā and they wrote letters around their British ancestor that had been part of the battle and were sent back to England because they wouldn't kill women and children. And they were locked and put away. With every signature became a story. Koia ko te tongi kura a tāwhiawe ki ana e kore tēnei whakaoranga e huri ki tua o aku mokopuna. Tātou me o tātou mātua, kā rongo rātou i a hakipia, i a iri hāpeti i te tuatahi, i a kāpene kuki, i a wairani, kaore ke i rongo i a hotuloa. Kaore ke nei i rongo i a pōta tau, i a tāwhiao, i a rewi mani a poto, i a waiatu, i a waiatu. Kwa tāi te wā, o te whakatupuranga whai muri ake, te whakapiki ake i ngā taumata mātauranga i mahu ai honei o mātou kau mātua i o mātou whānau. This announcement means to us, through the ropu of the Petihana, more than I can express in words. It will provide us with the resources, with the skills to make informed choices uh, about healthcare, about land, about the well-being of all people in Aotearoa. Ke pēnei i raba te tahuritanga o te marau o Aotearoa. Me pēnā pei o te kōrero. Te ururo, you were the minister, and you were in some of those shots, by the way. By the way, you look like you've lost a bit of weight since then. Well done. But you were in some of those shots there, and you know, I get a real sense of a want from the next generation to take this forward, to really have a wider conversation with all New Zealanders about our history, about who we are, about these significant events that we've been talking about. And everyone feels a sense of, of optimism. However, 
there is also a sense that there are those in this, com in this society, and uh, uh, Leone's talked about this, who will never want to be a part of that conversation. Is it a case of people like Leah and her ilk just simply overtaking the great wave that washes that kind of sentiment out of this country? Is that what you sense when you watch this video clip? Well, it's going to take some movers and shakers like that because there's such a big, huge wave to move. Uh, how big a wave? Tell well, me how big a wave. Kei te kōrero tātou mo te āhua tango te ao pākea, e kōrero hiake nei. Kei te pai tātou te ao Māori. Ho mōhi o tātou, a, ki te āhua tango te noho ao Māori nei, a niu te rini nei. Engari anō te ao pākea, kei te noho kūware, kore mōhi o. Ki te āhua tango tō tātou au. I naka haere, tētahi ki roto i tētahi o ngā kaupapa nei. Ko tō ngāka, ko tō whatu manawa, i tītia ki te āhua tango te riri me te aroha. You know, one of the things that, as I think about Dangiriri, and I was there on that day, and you go to Maunga Puatu, and there was Pākehā people there, but the vast majority were our people. You cannot but be moved by the passion of our people talking about our history. Mm. But there was just a small audience of non-Māori, a, uh, 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 a heap of Māori, who are obviously interested in our history, but we've got such a huge wave to move because we have generation after generation who have been stuck with what they know, and they only know what they know. Mm. If you haven't been taught anything else, well, that's it. There might have been a time in, in New Plymouth here or at Waitara when the common name of this town was Waitara. Mm. Mm. That's how people talked about it because that's what Koro said or my grandmother said and my great-grandmother said, so I'm going to say it and my grandchildren are going to say it. Mm. That's how it rolls. And so if you learn a particular history from back then, you will stay with that history. So we've got, when I talk about a big wave, it's a big wave of mātauranga, of education, that can't be left for Māori continually to give up our kōrero and share with everybody all of the time, because we actually got to educate our own too. Mm -hmm. So it means the greater mass has to educate the greater mass, and that's why it's great to see so many non-Māori here today mm -hmm. and tonight, because actually it's in your hands to help us out to teach the people of this land about our shared history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With martial law in place, hostilities were now inevitable. Veteran warrior chief Hapurona emerges as the military leader and tactician. The man and the hour have met. Hapurona had um, a different experience in war. Hapurona had been up in the far north, and uh, so that experience in fighting the park out came to the fore. Um, as a person we needed when we were invaded by the British Army. A large gathering was called in New Plymouth by the government. A large feast was held for all of those who attended. It was attended by people such as Te Teira, Te Rangitake and Hapurona and many, many others. And it was there the karaki of, that Hapurona composed, advocating peace, ko te karaki o te maungārongo, coming from a person who was recognised for his skill, his strategy in war, his words meant something when he was the one advocating that Taranaki did not want war, it wanted peace. Hapurona said, I've seen war, I've seen what war gives the people, and we do not want this for Te Atiawa. We do not want this for Taranaki, and what starts in Waitara will very quickly escalate to the whole country. But the crown was not for turning. The British set up a garrison in Waitara, and in response, 
Hapurona hastily builds a fortified pa at the Kōhia, overlooking the garrison's main route back to New Plymouth. And today, there's nothing here, nothing at all, not even a signpost to mark this place, Te Kōhia Pa, as one of the most significant sites in New Zealand's history. For us in Taranaki, the 17th of March in 1860 was the most important date. That was the date where the first shots were fired upon Te Kōhia Pa. Te Kōhia was a statement. Te Kōhia was a statement by our people in clear view of the Crown's military camp that this is our whenua. You can't just come here and say that we've surveyed it, therefore we've bought it, therefore it's ours. And there wasn't a major battle there, as much as it was uh, the major signal that the Crown had started hostilities against us without provocation. From a Māori perspective, that was all important. If Māori had launched the first attack, or well, then we would have been in the wrong. However, the Crown had done that. That demonstrated that they were the aggressor. Following on from that, it was considered that the Te Atiawa cause was a just one and that others would then come to their assistance and aid them. Almost immediately, there are calls from Waikato and so on. It was attacked by the Crown, thinking that this is where Te Atiawa was going to hold their ground and to take a stand but when they attacked, there was no one in there. The people within it had all left. The assumption on the crowd side was that there would be a quick, easy victory. And this is a source of immense frustration and these assumptions of an easy victory, they don't bear fruit. about a young kōtiro. Ka koa te tamahi ne whakaari a te iringa niu. She was sent to climb to the top of te iringa niu, the tallest peak within the Kaitake Ranges, to send a message to the iwi of Taranaki to the south, that the war within Waitara had begun.